Welcome back to Real Estate Happenings, your go-to podcast for all things real estate. This week, we're discussing leveraging social media presence for businesses. Are you ready? Hello, everyone. I am back with another podcast all about Houston entrepreneurship scene. This week, we'll be speaking to the legendary Super Sam of Exclusive Furniture about his experience as a business owner and how you developed your business. Sammy, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Good. Le- legendary. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for being here today. I'm like that. I'm flattered. You should be flattered. You're a legendary here in Houston. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. But tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about your story. Uh, where do you want me to start at? Wherever <laughs> was, you would when like. I was, when I was stealing cables or when I start furniture business. <laughs> Let's not talk about stealing the cables. <laughs> Let's talk about the furniture business since we all know you for that. So I'm writing this book about, about me. Okay. Because I feel like people need to know a little bit about me. And so hopefully, you know, keep an eye out, uh, look out for like hopefully end of this year or early next year. And I talk about, you know, when I wanted to make some money, you know, I did steal cables. You know, I saw and, and I was selling cable services for like 30 bucks, you know, jailbreaking these cables. But I don't want to talk about that today. I, I, that's <laughs> definitely, you know, way, you know, way out of my um, what I do today. You know, I sell furniture. And uh, I mean, I do, I do a lot of other things too. You know, this is like real estate talk and not a lot of people know, but, you know, I do real estate also. You know, my focus is always commercial real estate because, you know, of my stores, because they're all commercial located. And I mean, you know, that's something that I've been focused on since 2014. We own almost all of our stores now, which is which is pretty good. A little accomplishment for, for a guy coming out of A-Leaf. Definitely big accomplishment. How many stores now? Eight stores. Eight and then stores. we got our distribution center. I started in furniture business 1998, which is 24 years ago. I know what yeah. you're thinking. I started it probably when I was like 12 years old. You were 12. I was about to <laughs> say that you had to have been 12. No, I started when I was 21 years old. And, you know, that was something that, that I kind of got in furniture business on. I didn't know anything about furniture. So I used to work for AT&T long distance and I was doing really good. I was, I was kicking butt, right? But then we got, I got laid off. They, they started doing the other stuff. When I got laid off, I kind of got depressed because I was making... I was 20 years old and I was making about $250,000 selling wow. long distance. Wow. Right? Got, you know, you get depressed when you don't make that kind of money. I had quit college, dropped out of college and um, didn't have any college education. So my dad took me to see my uncle in California and we were going to go to Disneyland. My uncle had opened up a small furniture store inside the mall. Okay. Well, it never rains in California, but when we were there, it rained every damn day. Right? You know rain means good luck. It rains means, it rain means good luck? Well, at least that's what I believe. Well, so, so while we are there, so we couldn't go uh, to Disneyland, so we went to my uncle's furniture store. And while I'm standing outside, he had a furniture store inside a mall. It was in Inland Empire Mall. Okay, across the hallway was uh, Forever 21. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm standing outside... And there are girls coming out, and I'm 20 years old at this time. You got to think about that. And I'm waving at these girls. The girls are waving back at me. <laughs> You're just saying hello. So, so I, told my, I turned around and told my dad, I said, Dad, I think I know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I'm going to start a furniture store. Selling furniture was secondary. Meeting girls was primary. That goal. was pr- <laughs> I love that. My dad ended up coming back to Houston. I stayed with my uncle for about five, six more days. Mm-hmm. Got a little quick education about furniture, came back to Houston, went to every furniture store for the next three months. I'll leave my house in the morning mm-hmm. and I'll take visual notes and write, write notes in there, you know, what furniture they carried, who the manufacturers were, how did the layaways work, how did the salespeople talk to the customers. I was, I was in furniture stores every single day. Layways. For those that don't know what a layaway is, <laughs> can you please define that? Well, layaway is something. Remember, I started my store in '98. Okay. okay. So layaways were hot that time. Yes. So you just go and put a little down payment, and then you make payments for four, five, six months until you pay that off. Your furniture stays with the with the vendor, with the you know, in the store. I remember Once you pay it off, then you can get your stuff. They. I don't even know if anybody anyone do layaways anymore. I have no idea. That would be interesting, though, just to hear if the, anybody does. This era, we in this era, we do credit. 
Yeah. And I bet yeah. you if you if you have like anyone who's like 24, 25 year old listening to this, they're like, layaway. What is a layaway? What is a layaway? I did all that and then I started looking for a spot. I mean, it was very crucial that any furniture store, any store I pick. First of all, my uncle had told me about the mall. Mm-hmm. He said, I, I asked him, why, why the store in the mall? And he said, well, because if you don't have money to advertise, you depend on foot traffic. The foot tra- there's already foot traffic in the malls. You know, rule of sales is the more people you talk to, the more opportunities you have. Right? That's what you tell your people, right? right. The more, I mean, it's, it's a numbers game. The, the more people you talk to, the more ups you get, the more opportunity you have. Or in simple English, the more at bat you are, the more and the more time you swing the bat, the more chances you get to hit a home run. So I'm like, okay, well, that's perfect. But the, the main thing was it has to be in front of a girl's store. Because remember, the whole thing was That's what got your attention. Right. So I found a store inside Almeida Mall, mm-hmm. and it was in front of Express. In 1998, Express did not sell guys' clothes. It was only women's clothing. So it was perfect. It was just, it was fake. I found a store inside Almeida Mall. I wanted to, you know, do it in a Hispanic concentrated area, concentrated area. Mm-hmm. And the mall was just perfect. And it was in front of a girl's store. Express. So, Express. I was making a lot of money, but you know what? I was talking to my friends about this. There are two kind of rich people. Okay. There are some people who are rich and they don't care if anyone else knows they're rich. And then the second t- kind of rich people, they have come across some money, they have made some money, and they want everyone to know that they are rich. They don't have to be rich. Mm -hmm. They just have come across some money. They want everyone to know they are rich, so they spend the money to make sure they buy flashy things, Mm -hmm. to make sure people know that they are rich. At that time, I was not rich, but I was making money, so I had to spend all the money. (laughs) (laughs) So I did not save a lot of money. I spent a lot of money. I was 20 years old. Come on, what do you yeah. think? Nowadays, we see a lot of people on Instagram, Facebook. There was no Instagram or Facebook. I think there was Facebook. No, no, there was no Facebook. MySpace. No, no, MySpace came later. Did it? I think it came like in 2001 or 2002. I got to go back and look. But there was, you know, so I was spending all the money. Mm-hmm. I mean, the faster I made it, the faster I spent it. And so I didn't have a lot of money spent. But I lived with my, you know, with my parents. And one of the prerequisites was I was the older son. I had to give money to support the household also. Okay. And uh, that's how immigrants do. We, we save all the money and we, we, we live together and we pay our dues. My mom reminded me all the time, you remember I did this for you? You got to pay back. <laughs> she still reminds me till today. She tells you that today. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, you know, um, so I had $40,000 saved, you know, and I started the furniture business. 24 years later, I mean, I'm still trying to make a name for myself. No, I think you've done that for sure. Because if you live, everybody in Houston for sure, I don't know where else, but knows exactly who you are. They might know where low prices live. <laughs> okay, let's talk about that. Where yeah. did that come from? Where, where did Super come Sam from? come from? Like what day did you just wake up? Did someone tell no. you? Tell us about that. A year later after I was, you know, look, I'm a very ambitious person. I truly believe in business mm-hmm. or in life. If mm-hmm. you're not growing, you're dying. You know, I wanted to grow. I wanted to be rich. I always want, I mean, you know, I always wanted to be rich. Okay. And one day I will be rich. So you got to figure, you know, I was like working hard and I wanted to open up a second store. The first store was good. Mm-hmm. Now, now we're going to do a second store, but outside the mall. Because I realized inside the mall was really hard because people were not going in the mall to buy furniture. Mm-hmm. They were going in the mall to buy clothes, buy shoes, you know, getting their ears pierced mm-hmm. or just walking around. Right. Okay. So furniture is a destination shop. You know, they're destination shops. People go to buy furniture only if they need furniture. They just don't go walk in there because they want to waste time. So I opened up a store outside the mall and then I knew that I have to advertise. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I need to be catchy. And I mean, you know, and I think everybody in Houston knows Mattress Mac had, you know, paved the way and he has set a standard right he's a great businessman at that time he had a slogan save you money everybody knew we knew save you money everybody knew me and my brother and uh we went to phoenix and california Mm -hmm. visit my uncles we're coming back on the way back we were like we were talking we were like we need to have something like a catchy slogan so while we were on the plane sitting in the back of the plane bouncing ideas and we came up with that where low prices live so you and your brother yeah does he work with you today yeah he's he's my partner he's i mean he probably works harder than i do now <laughs> so but yes he's he, uh, he works with he's my he's my he's my right hand man 
When was the first time you actually said it out in public or in front of the camera? So when we came back, I mean, this was in 99, okay? And we had opened up our store. I, I hired this guy, his name was uh, Sheldon. But Sheldon came with Super Sam. We we're low price lifts. So I said, we're low price lifts. And he's like, Sam, you got to punch it in. And I said, what do you mean punch it in? So I thought he meant punch it in. So I got on the camera. I said, we're low price lifts. And I punched it in. And he said, well, I didn't mean it like that. I meant it with your voice, but that works. <laughs> And oh that's where gosh. the infamous punch came in. Oh, wow. And, so it you know, just happened. Today, people still make, you know, sometimes they make fun of me. Sometimes they get excited when they see me. For and they, sure. they do the punch. So it definitely stuck. I mean, it's amazing. And that's how I know you as well. And low prices live. Like, you know, yeah. it just, that's you. I mean, you know, of course, we have evolved, you know, with, with time. And everybody evolves. And remember, right. I, I truly believe if you're not evolving, if you're not growing, then you're dying. I'll say we probably the biggest local furniture store in Houston, probably do more than anybody. Local, locally owned store in Houston. And uh, I love that. Continue growing, so, For uh, sure. Yeah. And you're very active on social media, so you're writing a book. But talk about how social media has helped you and your business. I know you started in the 90s in the mall, uh -huh. but when did you wake up and say, okay, that's it, I need to be on social media? For, for, for business, what does it say? Wake up and smell the coffee? Yes. Right? <laughs> and you, so if you're, not in, if you're not doing social media advertising, I mean, you're really not doing yourself justice. Right. I am a big believer of advertisement. Advertising, totally. I believe in marketing. I believe in advertising. I can give you an example what my train of thought of marketing is like having a party. Mm -hmm. Let's just say you and your husband decide to have a party in your beautiful house you get you a nice outfit you get these best shrimp cocktail you get an ice sculpture you get the best cover band or best band hell you can have i don't know uh, aerosmith come over there and sing it doesn't matter or 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 in beyonce come and sing right i like or beyonce the, or, or the or the hottest singer nowadays everybody don't know but the hottest singer singer in the world the mm -hmm. most streamed Artist is Daddy Yang. I mean, I'm sorry, is uh, Bad Bunny. No way. You can have Bad Bunny come over there and sing. Everybody who, loves Bad Bunny. Who sells? Who sells out? Uh, uh, a sta you know, Toyota Center two times, and they come back eight months later and sells, sells out. Mixed bad Bay Bunny. Two nights, and then I mean, it's crazy. So I mean, yeah, Bad Bunny, or you can have Bad Bunny over there. Best margaritas, best liquor, best entertainment. The flamenco dancers, the ice sculpture, the, the fire, and whatever. I wanna you want to go to do. this party, Bad Bunny, flamenco dancers. Yeah, you can have whatever you want to do. Okay. But then you give your husband some invitation cards. Mm -hmm. and, and you say, baby, these are 1,000 invitation cards, drop them in the mail. Mm -hmm. And he leaves them in his glove compartment and forgets to invite him. How many people will show up at your party? I'd kill him. How many people will <laughs> show up at your party? Nobody. Say, Nobody. It's just like that. If you don't advertise, you can have the best price, the best product, the best looking people in your, in your business. Mm -hmm. If you don't market and you don't advertise, right. it's just like not inviting anybody to your party. Right. Okay, so I always believe in advertising, advertising and marketing. You've got to show sure. people what you're doing. Social media mm -hmm. is right now, mm -hmm. you're not at the ground floor anymore. You were at the ground floor. That opportunity has passed, but you still not on the 32nd floor or the 50th floor. You're still somewhere achievable mm -hmm. if you advertise or you market yourself on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, I love your TikTok videos. You know, I mean, TikTok is a good way. Instagram is a good way. I am on social media personally because, and I, you're not going to believe it, believe it or not, it, it helps me sell furniture. At the end of the day, we all have a purpose. Right. Okay. I like to do it because I like to give back. But at the same time, Right? Me coming over here, talking about it, talking to you. It's just like giving back. It's like an act of giving back. I'm not going to get paid. Maybe you might, hopefully, you'll add a couple of followers on my Instagram. You know, we are so, we are so likes and follower-hungry people nowadays. I mean, it's just the world we live in. But, uh, but, I think, but I think it's really vital and important to one's success. Right. If you are anybody, you can be, an, you can be a real estate agent. You can be... Uh, a cake, a baker, mm -hmm. you can be a, 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 you know, a baker, you can make cookies, 
I mean, you are doing whatever you're doing, whatever business you're doing, whatever. You can be an artist. You can be a photographer. You can be a videographer. If you are not on social media, then how will people know about you? How's, and social media is free. This is a pay-to-play world. Amen. Wake up and smell the freaking coffee. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Let's say you sell an $800,000 house, mm -hmm. and it's going to make you $24,000. Spend some freaking money. Fine, you got a broker who's taking 30% or 40% of it, and you want this broker because you want to learn or whatever, you want to be part of the community, perfect. 7,200 goes to her, the other 16,800 goes to you. What is your marketing budget? How many, how many real estate agents have marketing budget? I can guarantee you, not a not lot. A lot. Right. You know why? Because the 80-20 game, come in, you know, 80-20 rule come to play. For sure. Do you know what an 80-20 rule is? I know you do. Yes. Okay. It's, a lot of people don't know. Tell them. Tell them what the 80-20 rule is. Well, you know how they say the top 1%? Yes. You know how you can be the 1% of the top 1% of the 1% of the 1%? You got to understand that you got to pay to play. For sure. Everything is pay to play. But you have to invest in yourself. Every real estate yeah. agent at NAN, it is a rule that they have to spend 30% of what they make on themselves marketing. Why would you not reinvest in yourself? How many of them, come on, let's just, let's just be serious. No, I'm serious. How many of them pay, pay Facebook marketing? What I'm talking about is to pay Facebook. And a lot of people don't understand that. Facebook is a business, a billion dollar business. Right. Okay. It's probably one of the biggest businesses out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. They are not, they are not a charity business. And a lot of people don't understand that social Putting, a, putting an ad or putting their message on social media only means that Facebook is going to deliver to a certain amount of people. Right. I have this thing on my Instagram where I, where I kind of break down mm -hmm. the rule of, you know, what Facebook does and what Instagram does and what TikTok does. If you need to pay to play. So that means, number one, Facebook is a business. Mm -hmm. They are going to take your message and they're going to, it doesn't matter if you have 100,000 followers, they will only serve to maybe 500 people. If the content starts getting a lot of traction, getting a lot of likes and comments and everything, they might push it to another 500 people. They are business. They will only push your message out to the masses, mm -hmm. to the non-followers and to your followers if you pay them. And a lot of people don't understand that. That's why hiring a, a, a cameraman or, you know, going and buying new nice clothes and buying a, you know, whatever, nice shoes and, you know, just spending money on yourself. That's not part of marketing budget. Marketing sure. budget is printing out flyers. Right. Marketing budget is even spending money to get more business. Spending money to get more business. Exactly. I mean, you know, For that's sure. That's what it is. I mean, and, and, and people don't do that. People don't do that. You know, I come across so many people. They don't do that. Then, then you know what other people, a lot of people don't understand? Agents, real estate agents, salespeople who work in car business, they will only be successful if they work wherever they work at, if they understand, if they think about it as their business, a business inside a business. I can guarantee you that 20%, top 20% of your agent make 80% of your revenue, and that's true in everything. Right? 20% of the furniture sells 80%. I mean, it's just 80-20 principle comes into effect for a lot of things. If you want to be successful, you should think about it wherever, whatever business you work at. You can work at a car dealership, a furniture store, a real estate agent, uh, a, a bakery shop. If you take accountability and if you think of that as your business, mm -hmm. you will be much more successful. I mean, you should be thankful if you're working as an agent somewhere when you've got an office to go to. Yeah, you, you know, you pay your 30%, 20%, 50%, whatever that is, right? But, but you, got, you got a team that you're working with. You have furniture in the office. You're doing all that. But if you... All do, that has, an, I mean, a cost to it. All that has it. that cost. But if you think about that as your business, mm -hmm. and now you run it as a business, then, then you can go much more further. And then the principle of business come in place. Don't spend all the money that you make save as much as you can for sure okay save for the rainy day the rain is always coming it's, it's gonna coming. it's gonna rain okay we know rain is right around the corner i see i see some dark clouds i saw it right <laughs> right when i was parking 
Okay. Not over this building. He didn't see it over this building well, I for saw sure. Far away. I saw him far away. Okay. No, it's important for people to definitely reinvest in themselves, not just, you know, real estate agents, all salespeople. You should always grab, and we talk about it here with our agents all the time 30% of that, you should reinvest in yourself. You're the CEO of your business. Exactly. You know, and that's I a like message that. that we always try to put across. So. Sammy's talking about all realtors, not at NAN. I just wanted to discuss yeah, yeah, that. Realtors, all real estate, yeah. But what about, you know, we talk about social media and what that's done and how you should reinvest in yourself. What was your first day like in front of the camera? Uh, Do you remember that day? I remember that day. I was Were nervous. you nervous? I'm, 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 I still get nervous. Do you really? Yeah, did you not see me get a napkin, wipe my sweat? But like that's it? because you went running earlier. Well, I know, but I still get nervous. I mean, you know. What was the first once, day like? Once the nervousness goes away, okay. right? Once the jitters go away, mm -hmm. it's just like, you can think about it. If someone is scared of being in front of camera, then they should practice in front of a mirror. Okay. okay. Is that what you did for your first day or no? I'm a strong believer in practice. Okay. So you did practice. Yeah. I practice okay. all the time. I don't do it now. I mean, now it's just... It just comes naturally. It just comes. I mean, I don't even practice my lines if... If you ever want to come when I'm doing the commercial, I tell the girl, I say, hey, say the line. And I say two times and then we, we shoot. Okay. Who does that remind you guys of? <laughs> who does that? Who? You do that? I do that all the time. Yeah. So do you think it's a skill or is it a talent? Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Right? Okay. So you can be skilled. Mm -hmm. You know, I, like there's a lot of people that say leaders are, leaders are born. I don't believe leaders are born. I believe, you know, yeah, LeBron James have skills he was born with, right? But there are people who can work hard and, you know, practice. If he doesn't practice, then guess what? He doesn't, he's not LeBron James. There's some kind of skill that okay. comes with it. I mean, there's some talent that comes with it. Obviously, actors are doing great on camera, right? We can't, I'm not an actor. I'm, I'm a neither. broker. Right. So do you feel like just practicing is what helped you become good yeah, on camera? I think In so. your social media. So it does, it's not a skill. You know, I, I don't know. It might be 50-50. Okay. I think it may be 50-50. Okay. And then something else I wanted to talk to you about, it, it goes in line with customer service. You know, at NAN, I believe in it so much that we made it part of our mission statement to say is we want to help our team, our agents, our customers find they're happy. Mm -hmm. How do you implement in your business customer service to make yeah. sure? You know, that's a good question. That I like your that. clients are happy. If you, if you have this mindset that I want a one-time banger, mm -hmm. you mean a customer that buys from me one time and I don't give a shit about them for the rest of the time, then you, you are, your business will not survive. You will go broke real soon. Any business, if they don't get the you know, customer more than one time, multiple times, matter of fact, in their lifetime, mm -hmm. then that business does not survive. Okay. okay? Any business is always built on repeat or referral business. Right. Okay, your business more like anything, right? You say, oh, well, somebody buys a house one time and then they'll never think about it. Well, if, if, if somebody's thinking like that, then that's a bad thought of, you know, bad thinking. Like me, oh, if I start thinking, a customer is gonna buy a bedroom set from me now and then they're not gonna think about me for eight years. Well, there's a lot of things that can happen. A flood, they grew out of it, they bought a queen bed, now they wanna get in a king bed because they had a kid, divorce, they bought a new house. Now they want something nicer, bigger. They just got a promotion. They came into some money and they want everyone to know that they're rich. <laughs> you know, all other kind of stuff. So you got to keep going back to the well. That's why subscription-based business are so popular, right? They said Costco made most of their money with that subscription. You know, that one year, the one year membership fee. Just like that. You cannot, in real estate also, you cannot think, oh, this person bought a house from me now. That's their lifelong investment no they might have come into some right, money and now they want people to know they got money right okay? so they what want a they, bigger what, house but in your stores what do you guys do to make sure customers are happy we do more tell than us anything. what are you okay. doing uh num well number one i mean you know we i believe i believe that when someone walks in a furniture store they are walking in there because they want to buy furniture okay okay uh nobody walks in a furniture store because they're bored okay there's a, there's a reason why they walk in a furniture store. There's a need. So, you know, be attentive to them. Number one, greet, greeting is very, very important. Uh, my, at my stores, we serve wine, beer, bottomless margaritas, 
cookies, chips, candies, whatever, everything. Sounds we, better than El Tiempo. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you ever want a free date night, come through. <laughs> and, and, I mean, most of the stores have, uh, have a, a kids' play area, so they can play in there, play some arcade games or whatever. But, I mean, you know, be attentive to your customer. If you're not there, I, look, sometimes people say they're looking, just looking, because that's the response that we were given as a society to answer. But everybody came in there to look. Don't hound them. Don't be an aggressor. But mm -hmm. at the same time, make them feel like they're they're your friends. Right. Okay. So be be there to answer their question. Listen to their listen to what the customer needs. If you impose your will on the customer, then the customer is not going to buy. Don't impose your will on the customer. Let the customer determine what their you know needs are, what what they want, and then make them feel comfortable. Be a friend. People want friends, especially when we grow up. Our circle of friends get less, little, right? So if you become a friend more than a salesperson, then you have more opportunities to sell. People buy from people they like and they trust. Okay. I always say that people do business with people yeah. they like. Well, Sammy, thank you so much for sharing. We really enjoyed having you here today. If you Thanks. don't follow him, guys, please make sure to follow him. Nancy, first of all, thank you. I appreciate it for you inviting me on the show. I can talk a lot. And if y'all, anyone wants to listen to me talk and blab, they can listen to, you know, they can check out my IG, my TikTok. Uh, but Nancy, I know we talked about where low prices live, and I want to kind of want you to do it with me. Since you, I'm on my show, I got to promote something. I mean, you know, no okay. funny. I mean, I'm sorry for that, but shameless plug. So can you do it with me? Yeah, I'll do it with you. All right, let's do it. Okay. So we're we, we going to move the mic a little bit because we got to okay. punch it in, okay? So I'm punching. Okay, okay. 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 Ready? Yeah. All right. All right. Exclusive furniture. Where, where low, low prices live. <laughs>